Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are heading back into the Shroud of Obscurity in order to shine a light onto some of the lesser known characters that populate this exceptionally deep world. But before we begin, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that this video is a sequel to the original Top 5 Obscure Characters, which I highly recommend you watch and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But as for right now, let's get ready for some weird, weird characters who most of us probably thought didn't even have names, if we remembered them at all. Criteria for this list is exactly the same as the last, which was super, super simple. Essentially all characters must have names, and all characters must be canon, because I cannot think of anything I'd like to occupy my time less with than hunting down obscure filler characters. The non-obscure ones are bad enough. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to another Top 5 Obscure Characters in One Piece. Number 5. Mr. Beans and Miss Katharina. Kicking things off today, we have a double feature of these two agents of Baroque Works whom we encountered during the Whiskey Peacock. Mr. Beans and Miss Katharina are agents in the Millions class and proof that it's not just the top agents of the organization who get assigned a partner. Although their naming schemes in the Millions region is a bit more nonsensical. But as a pair of bounty hunters, these two follow a very predictable style of attempting to dupe their target into thinking that they are but a frail religious woman and a powerless child. However, they are anything but. With Miss Katharina waiting for an opportunity moment to release a deadly poison from her cross, while Mr. Beans has some fighting skills of his own, choosing to wield the ever classic knife as well as a handy flintlock pistol. As for obscurity, these two were part of a group of 100 bounty hunters that were defeated by the very non-obscure Roanoa Zoro in but a single evening. However, I'm willing to bet that after having seen the faces of these two characters, you are more than likely going to at least have some vague recollection of them, and sadly, it is that very fact that prevents Mr. Beans and Miss Katharina from appearing any higher than the number five spot. Number four. Eddie. Now depending on how amazing your memory is, you may indeed recall this figure from the Jaya arc as he was a member of the Bellamy Pirates. But to me personally, there's only one blonde asshole that comes to mind when I think of that arc, and that's Bellamy. But hey, that's why Eddie has earned his place here today. Eddie is actually the navigator of the crew, as you can tell by his smart guy looking glasses, which denotes that he must have a role that requires some sort of brain. Actually, Eddie is pretty much a scrawny geeky incarnation of his Captain Bellamy, with their particular note of similarity being just how smug and dickish they are. Interestingly, enough, Eddie got a bit of an extended role in the anime, which rather unfortunately lessens his obscurity ever so slightly, when he attempted to stop Sarkis from fighting Luffy. Also, it should be noted that it is entirely likely that Eddie travelled with Bellamy to Skypiea, however, after returning to the Blue Sea, it is completely unknown what became of him. A perfect end to a wonderfully obscure existence. Number 3. Stevie and Bouchon. Here we have a duo of station managers who made their first and I think only appearance during the Water 7 saga. Their greatest claim to fame comes courtesy of being sticklers for the rules and being unwilling to allow Sanji aboard the Puffing Tom. Although they quite clearly failed to stop Sanji, because I mean this is Stevie and Bouchon we're talking about. They more than likely don't pose the greatest of threats to a Straw Hat pirate. However, to add to that, they were put to work by Nami and sent on a mission to acquire meat and sake, mistakenly thinking that it was for Nami herself. And the importance of these provisions cannot be understated. These allowed Luffy and Zoro to recover their strength, and there was even enough left over to become a snack for Luffy following his defeat of Blueno. So you could even say that the actions of Stevie and Bouchon are the reasons why the Straw Hats emerged victorious during the Any Slobby incident. Sadly, as with many wonderfully obscure characters like this, the anime just had to go and give them a little more to do, lessening their obscure nature. In this case, Bouchon attempted to discover the real identities of the CP9 agents, and in a much less useful action, he became quite a gossip, managing to misinterpret several details and come to the conclusion that Nami was in a love triangle and even thought that she would be getting married to Pauly. And while that's great for providing some comedic relief, any additional time these two got to spend on screen does indeed lower their prospects in regards to this list. Number 2. Tomato Gang. Alright, now we're getting nice and weird. To the best of my knowledge, Tomato Gang has never appeared in the anime, despite being related to a fan favourite easter egg character known as the Panda Man. Not like biologically related, of course. I mean, one is a panda and one is a tomato. It's unlikely that a family unit would have evolved without some very kinky parents. Alas, Tomato Gang actually acts as the antagonist in the Panda Man story, and is in fact the reason why Panda Man is being chased all around the world. This is because Tomato Gang is allegedly owed quite a sum of money from Mr. Panda Man, and as a result, he has appeared no less than 11 times in the manga, always in hot pursuit of his time. Target. As for exactly why he has never appeared in the anime while the Panda Man has, all I can really say is, dunno. He is simply too obscure for logical thought to be worthwhile, which is precisely what we're looking for. However, the one thing that does hold him back from topping this list today is his relation to Panda Man. If anybody has ever gone to the trouble of researching Panda Man, then Tomato Gang will be one of the first things that pops up, alerting the fanbase quite easily to his existence. So I believe that there is at least one other character in the series who tops him 
in obscurity. Number 1. Akoan. Here we have a character who I deeply regret not putting on my top 5 best dogs list, but hey we can make up for some of that fault here today. Akoan is best known as Wapol's pet dog, and made his appearance in the series during the cover story of Wapol's omnivorous hurrah. During this time he performed the most amazing action in the world by urinating on Wapol, however this did come at a cost. And this is probably a good time to point out that Hakawan is actually better known in this form, which was given to him after he was processed in Wapol's Baku Baku factory, being given a box for a head and lenses for eyes. This is also assumedly where he received his name, as in Japanese Hako can mean box, and Wan can mean bark. So his name is Box Bark, or actually even better, Bark Box. God, that's a fantastic name for a dog. Sadly my dog already has a name, but I'll keep that in mind for future pooches. Following Bark Box's transformation, he is also completely obedient to his new master, and can even be considered the third most prominent figure of the new Black Drum Kingdom behind Kinderella and of course Wapol himself. But despite that prominence, Akawan's sheer obscurity cannot be denied, and that is what has earned him the number one spot on this list. And that pretty much does it for another top 5 obscure characters in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favourite obscure characters in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.